66. Page number 66. Let's all stand and sing at Calvary. Here's our spin at Vanity and Pride. Page number 66. I spend in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died. Calvary, mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, there my burden soul my liberty. God's word and that's my sin I learned. Then I trembled as the law I turned. Till my guilty soul and glory turned. Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. and there was multiplied to me. There my burden broke my Give to Jesus everything. Now I gladly on him as my king. Now my rapture soul can only sing. Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden soul found liberty. Turn to page number 147. Leaning on the everlasting arm. Page number 147. Why the why the joy did my be? The everlasting arm. What a blessedness. Why the
second song or the next song, I'm going to disappear because I have thank you cards from Brother Banks for those of you who gave something uh, and sent something. Uh, he said, uh, "Can you be, will you be my post office?" And uh, so uh, I'm supposed to be the post office, uh, but you know, true to form, you know, the oxymoron postal service. Well, evidently, um, here I am, you know, so, uh, the lack thereof. So, uh, but I will get those cards, and, uh, and he does appreciate all that you've done, uh, your kindness, your prayers. Uh, uh, it's, it's amazing what the Lord's doing right there in Columbus. Uh, had an opportunity to talk to a number of folks uh, just while I was there. Uh, my sister came down and uh, went to her in the hotel, and, uh, talking to the, uh, to the clerk there on uh, Tuesday evening very open to the gospel. Uh, they just moved there from Virginia looking for a church home. So uh, then we went to a restaurant, talked to the lady there. And next time went to the same restaurant, but the bank took us and uh, talked to another, uh, the other waitress there. It's interesting because uh, uh, she uh, we got to talking and uh, asked about it. You know, she had a church home one hour and she, uh, she said that she did. told me when she went to church and she said if you would remember my daughter's in prayer, they're going to Colleen, uh, and uh, we stopped by the way, so those of you who are familiar with Texas, and uh, said, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're driving with my granddaughter, so uh, she called their, their names. I can't remember their names, I'll be honest with you. Um, and she started laughing. She told them, she goes, you won't remember these names. I said, ma'am, as hard as I could try, I said, I don't think I can remember those, because I just remember the Smith family in prayer, and uh, that they were uh, she was concerned about traveling and uh, at night especially in, in the distance and all. I said, well, let's have a word of prayer right now. And we had a word of prayer and she, just, she was just touched with the, uh, the fact that somebody would care enough, you know, not just to say they would pray for them, but to actually pray for uh, the prayer request. And, uh, she uh, took a track from the church and I said she was going home. As soon as she got off, she was going to go home uh, and uh, watch the live stream and archive it. By the point, uh, at least she was touched, and then the others that I've dealt with. And, uh, it's amazing how they're, they're just being faithful to use the uh, opportunities that the Lord gives you. Uh, is, God will use those. And uh, if you get up every morning and you pray, Lord, just use me, just send me to that person that needs, um, needs the encouragement or needs the Lord, and let me uh, be an instrument in helping you. Uh, be surprised how often the Lord does that uh, during the day. You go, well, I don't want to talk, so I don't think I'm going to pray that prayer. But if He if He impresses you, I'll guarantee He'll give you the words to, uh, to say and, and to do. Uh, but if you'll be faithful in that, you'll be surprised what God can do. Uh, so uh, anyway, just I'll, I'll let you look at the bulletin if you got one. If not, there's some in the back on the table. Uh, we've got several things coming up. We've got Mother's Day coming up. We've got uh, uh, Easter coming up next Sunday. Uh, it's just some things are coming today, it's coming apart so, uh, and around. So just be faithful in the house of God. Again, appreciate you being here tonight. Turn to page number 389. Page number 389. Let's all stand. We'll ask the men to come forth to the offering on the last page, 389.
that interesting what pastor talked about in the song we just sang I was going to talk about something else but as I took the step God said talk about this you know Jesus when asked what the most important thing the Bible says we said what's the top law he said love the Lord thy God with all your heart soul mind and strength then he added a second to it. He goes, wait. The second is, is just like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. He said, on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Every commandment we are given hangs on those two. Now that's, that's all the pastor talked about. Loving people enough to tell them the truth. My friend at work who's an atheist. He was complaining about Christians always trying to tell him he's going to hell. I said, well, if I believe you're going to hell and I love you, or if I, if I, if I say I'm your friend and I think you're on your way to hell and I don't tell you about it, am I really your friend? Am I really showing the love of Christ to you that I claim that I have? Kind of blinked a couple times. He said, well, uh, uh, uh. would we get that understanding that to love others is to show Christ in everything we do because they need it? They need it. And, uh, as we receive the offering, I'm going to ask Brother Philip to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for allowing us to come here tonight. Please bless this offering that we're about to receive. May it go to the furtherance of your gospel spreading. Lord, please spread your hand around Brother Steve. Please fill him with your Holy Ghost. Give him the message that we need to hear tonight. Prepare our hearts to receive it, Lord. Let us go out this week and do your good work. Let us tell all those about you. Help us, Lord, to win the loss to you. Please bless this offering and please do a work in us and forgive us all for we told you. All this I ask in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Please be seated.
Makes it a lot better. I promise you won't come on and on. But uh, I always tell everybody, you know, if they want to sing. I still get nervous when I sing. Been doing this a lot of years. I still get that way. And uh, especially when you do a new song and you're not sure. I've got here a couple of times and I'm trying to remember how did that song start. And it's here and I'm in trouble. So it's one of those things that happen. I have been thinking about what to preach on tonight. I had different ideas. In fact, I have an idea I'm working on. It just it wasn't ready. It wasn't one God wanted tonight for sure, so I uh, went another route. We're going to look at the book of Jonah. The title of my of, of the message tonight is Lessons from Jonah. Lessons from Jonah. And you know, we as Christians, we need to learn some lessons. I was talking to my young people this morning in Sunday school. You know, the biggest thing about it, God teaches us to respect those elders and listen to those elders. Those people that are older than us. They've been through some things. And, you know, when they say, don't do this, it could be that they did it and found out it's the wrong way to go. And, you know, they're trying to keep you from going in that wrong path. And so it's important that we, uh, we look at this. And, you know, Jonah... I think he's just hard-headed, just like the rest of us, okay? I'll be honest with you. Uh, you look at it, you read about it, and uh, we're, we're going to begin. We look at Jonah chapter 1, and in verse 1 it says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amatai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Arise, go to Nineveh. Let's ask the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. We thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, all that you've done. We thank you for giving uh, Jim and Mike a safe trip back, Lord, a safe trip there, and a good time. 
Lord, we ask you that you'll just help us tonight. That the message will be from you, not from you. That you'll just take the words and you'll use it the way you want. Help us. It's always with you. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. I, it, and when we look at this, you know, Jonah is just, just like all of us. He had some ideas of his own. How many of us have ideas of our own? Yeah, you know, we always do. We got ideas. That, that won't work. I'll do it this way. And somebody says, no, that's not going to work. Oh, but the way I do it, it'll be all right. No. You know, if we just if we just listen to God, we'd be a whole lot more wrong. And we're going to find out some places in Jonah, things that Jonah did, that he just needed to listen. But he decided not. In verse two, in verse uh, three, after he told, after God said, "Arise, go to Nineveh," the Bible says, "But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish." The first lesson we need to learn is we don't need to be fleeing from God, going the other way from God. You know, things about it, we think that we are hiding, and He can't see. I always tell people, you don't tell kids. You know, the big thing about it. When, you, when your parents are not standing there, you think, ah, they won't know about it. But unfortunately, God knows everything. And God sees it. And even though we may be in the corner, we may be hid from everybody else, God sees it. And God knows. You never know when somebody walks up to you and says, hey, Brother Steve, what are you doing way over here? We were in Dallas one, one summer and kid that I taught in school walked up and said, hey, Coach, what are you doing here? I told my wife, I didn't look at him. I'm doing everything right. You know, in the right spot and all that. Because the thing about it, it's amazing. We need to be very careful. But Jonah went to sleep. He thought, you know, I don't want to do this. I'm, I know better. And so he began to flee. He wanted to do his own thing. You know? As human beings, we want to do our own thing. That is the biggest problem with us. Why well, I tried so hard to get young people to read the Bible. Read the Bible. This is the Word. This is the Word of God. We were studying this morning in John. He, Jesus says, me and my Father are true. His words are true. You know, all this other stuff we get, we're not too sure about. Not sure what. We listened to the weather this morning. It's supposed to be 41 degrees. We planted our tomatoes last week. My wife goes, You think it's going to be 41? It's going to be cold. I said, I hope it's going to be that cold. I don't want to lose tomatoes that we just put in the ground. But you know, you never know what they're going to do. You get up the next morning and you go, Uh oh, they messed up or Man, they blew that one. They didn't get close. But the thing about it is, we don't. God knows. God knows everything. And if we'll just get to that point and understand it and quit staying away and try to get away from God, it would, it's important. In verse 6, he says, when, 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 he got, when he started to flee, there rose a storm. Going back and forth. And he was sound asleep in the bottom of the boat. I don't like boats. I don't like water. Not my favorite thing. Somebody says, why don't you take a cruise? No. When I see water around me, I'm in trouble. I went out with Larry Huff one time. And we went through. We got out there. and I looked, around. I looked at Larry and said, Larry, where are we going to land? He goes, oh, it's that way. I'm glad you know, but I have no idea where we are. We begin to rock that boat. And I'm being but here Jonah, he must have been used to that water. He was laying down there sound asleep. But he was trying to get He was fleeing from God. It's important that we realize when he says in verse 6, he says, So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon your on thy God, if it be so that God will think upon us that we perish not. See, he was fleeing. God brought him. You know, sometimes we start doing things and God brings 
the discipline around us. He brings that storm to us, whatever that might be. You know, sometimes we wonder, what in the world did God allow this to happen? No explanation. But then the first thing I ask myself, where am I supposed to be? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Never forget when I surrender to sleep. I just want to do what God wants. Whatever that might be, wherever that might be, I just want to do God's will. I don't want to run the other direction. I want to realize that God is important in our lives. And we need not to run. We need to get right in this. As long as you're there, you're protected. You're taking he took off, went to sleep. And when they found him, then I like the question. Down here, if I can. They asked the question in verse 8. He goes, Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for, for whose cause this evil is upon us. What is thine occupation, and whence cometh thou? What is thy When they said, what is your occupation? Okay, here's me in my weird thing. My mind. He goes, I'm a preacher. You know, sometimes it's amazing. We run into people and they say, well, I'm a preacher. And I ask my question, why are you here? Why are you doing that? You know, if we're preachers, if we're, if we're Christians, we ought to act like Christians. We ought to walk like Christians. We ought to talk like Christians. If we're not, <coughs> it's very scary. I, I've been coaching for many years. And I was coaching in a game, and this, this, we had a always had a rival against us one team. Well, I mean, but unfortunately, the coach would throw his clipboard down, and I mean, he'd do all sorts of things. And one day we were talking, and somebody somebody said, "Do you know who that is?" got to look beyond those things. Winning is not everything. Body we tell our kids all along, we're showing we're so more God. Not us. If we win, that's great. If we don't, it's okay. We've got to look beyond that. But he said, what's your occupation? I can promise you. And I'm sure he doesn't say this. This is, this is my word. They said, then what are you doing out here then? Out in the middle of this water. And not where you're supposed to be. That's the key. Where are you supposed to be? Don't stand. He's fleeing. He's going the other direction. Just like human beings do. And God's trying to get his attention. God gets a little bit of his attention. Okay, what can we do to stop the storm? See, Donna knew what the problem was. Donna knew it was him. He said, throw me overboard. They thought, oh, let's try other things. It didn't work. He said, what's it going to take? Throw me overboard. And I can see him. They picked him up. Just as he got over the boat and they let him go, before he hit that water, the storm went. It was nice and smooth. See, God wants to get our attention. God's trying to get our attention. He allows storms in our lives because we're not listening. We're not paying attention. We try to look beyond. You know, I wondered if when they if he said throw me overboard, he may have been hoping that uh, he'd die, that he wouldn't have to go to Nineveh. You'll find out he didn't want to go to Nineveh in the first place. He thought, you know what, if I sink, I'll drown, I don't have to do it. God has a good plan. 
God says, no, you're going to live through it. You're going to go through some other things. God knows what he's doing. He puts him in the belly of a man. A big fish. Human being said, that can't happen. You can't live. You just shut God can take nothing and make something. We used to have a, magi- a, a man in our church. At, we were down the road. His name was Brother Pooey Louie. Brother Jim, Brother Bob Stike. He was a, a magician. And I mean, he could make things appear. He made a rabbit appear. That rabbit went home with him. That was not my favorite thing. It froze. Patty was in the hospital, and as soon as it got warm, he died. I had to run back and forth out of the in, the in the ice to keep it, and he died when it got warm. But he just, all of a sudden, he reached in it, and here comes the rabbit. He showed the hat, there was nothing in the hat. But it was a trick. My daddy used to do some trick. I can't do tricks. My daddy used to do one, they'd take a quarter, and he could spin it out and make it go, but my thumbs and my arthritis don't work very well anymore. And it don't hide. But the thing is, when I throw it up, you can't see it. But it's stuck out there. Then you can reach down and grab it and pull out some more. See, we can do tricks. God is a God knows what he's Put him in that belly of that fish. You know, God allows us to go through things, and sometimes we cry because we're afflicted. In verse, uh, in, in two and verse two, it says, chapter two and verse two, it says, and said, and and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and He heard me out of the belly of the of hell. Cried I, and Thou heardest my voice. God's listening. God's trying to get our attention. God wants our attention. He doesn't get our attention. No. Remember Brother Lester Roloff. We had a man in service this morning, and he, he remembered Brother Lester Roloff and thing, and I said, well, I was named after Brother Lester Roloff. My middle name is Lester. Daddy was saved. I said, that's the law of me. He, you know, we were talking about it, but Brother Lester Roloff was just a man that, that tried to do what God did. He was something. But it's amazing to see God if He works and, and, and does. You know, God just wants to get our attention. And Brother Prescott, I think, was his name. He had gotten saved in Houston. And as when he got saved, his life changed. He began to serve the Lord. My grandparents were in Prescott. And they, uh, he began then to get away from God and you know, do the things that he shouldn't be doing. And miss Sundays and all those things like that. But, Brother Roll walked in the funeral home and he said, My title of my message is Why I Know. And he preached all those other people, they were shocked because they knew the way he lived. They knew what he did. Show you You know, God's trying to get it. Sometimes if we don't get it, there's only one option. Why it's important that we continue to serve God. Why it's important that we look for God. In verse 9, he prayed for deliverance. You know, okay, God, I'm in this well. I'm in the belly of this well. I need to I need out of here. Lesson from Jonah is that you know what? If Jonah had turned away, turned and done what God would have done, wanted him to do, this would have never happened. That's the key. 
this would have never happened. But because we want to do our own thing, we want to make our own decisions, we want to make our own. This is our reason. This is our reason. We're trying to make our It's that important. He began to pray. God delivered him. In fact, in, verse, in chapter 3, he says, uh, no, in verse in 2 and verse 10, he says, And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon dry land. And then the, in verse, uh, chapter 3, it says, And the word of the Lord came again unto Jonah the second time, Rise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach. Aren't you glad God did the second time? And third time? And fourth time? Times your parents say, Don't do that. Don't do that. You know, there comes a point when it's no more don't do that. And it's there. You know? It, 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 it's something there to make you to understand. Don't do that. God's trying to get out. That's what you So, my, my thing is, I think he wasn't happy living in the belly of the fish. And he went to preaching. He went, he headed to Nineveh, and he started preaching. The sad thing about it, his people were getting saved, and he got upset over it. You know, we talk about this. We ought to visit. We ought to, we ought to knock on doors. Yesterday, I don't think we ought to. I didn't talk to anybody yesterday. I think my wife got to talk to one or two. He was on one side, and I think I think Kyle got to talk to one. Maybe two. But you know, knock on the door, nobody. In fact, we were laughing. There was probably somebody in a couple of houses that got real quiet. I told him probably what happened is he said, people are, are walking down the street. They got tracked. Don't say a word. I mean, he knocked on the door. Dogs didn't bark. People didn't move. Windows were open, so, you know, I knew somebody had to be there. I'm not leaving my windows open leaving the house. They just didn't. You know, he got upset because people were getting saved. We need to want to do We need to want to do what God would have to do. That's what God wanted Jonah jo- uh, uh, to do. He wanted him to go and pray. You know, God may be calling you in certain ministry. You need to do what God wants you to do. That's the thing about it. God wants you. We just need to do it. I would love to see our church do it. I remember a number of years ago when we had a guy seven foot eight inches tall and a little guy four foot eleven. And people were standing outside driving. Couldn't get in. One seat. I love it. Bad thing about it. We just have our people on the street. They just want to sit. They want to sit on the sideline. And if you'll notice in, in, in chapter 4, once people were getting saved, Jonah got upset says, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, Lord, I, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God, a merciful, slow to anger, and great kindness, and repentest thou of me. A God that loves us and doesn't say that's wrong. He's got it. Aren't you glad we're not God? I don't like you. Boom. You're gone. You're out of here. You know? Sometimes I wonder why God picked up the That's what he's talking about. We got church people who are playing the game. 
They're playing around. They're acting like it. I wasn't saved until I was 18 years of age. I've been hurt all my life. I could tell you how to be saved. I wasn't saved. But I could tell you how to be saved. People playing the game. We need to know. We need to know. Going to church. Even when souls were being saved, Jonah was being saved. Lord, I knew you were going to do this. I don't like these people. I said, I like God like that. No, we don't like the sin. They need to know Christ is their person. While we take our tracks and put them on doors, but nobody answers. That's why we try our best when we talk to somebody and they won't talk to us, but we take one of these because inside that track is the plan of salvation. Jonah says, I told you so. I told you, God, you were going to do it this way. got angry because God was doing what God said he was doing. You read God's Word. You open the Bible and you read God's Word and find out this is what God says He's going to do. He wants to do it. God does not respect your person. God doesn't look at color. God doesn't look at, at, at the skin type or anything. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever. He didn't say, oh, only this person could or that person. Whosoever. Realizing that he died on that cross, that he now had a way to salvation. We have a way to go to salvation. Only says, I knew. I like verse 5. He says, So Jonah went out of the city and sat down on the east side of the city and there made him a booth and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. I just looked down here and he just sat under it. What do you do? do that, you know. I don't want to do this. You can't do that. You know, like that. And sit there. I would not like somebody to walk up to me and you say, well, I'm a Christian. You're a Christian? Kind of scary. Kind of scary when they say that. And seen fit to do. I don't want to be the I don't want to be the one that goes to places and do the things and say the things and he goes.
have somebody in your mind that you would just love. I have some people maybe I don't like very well. Think about the people that took those nails and put them in Christ's hand. And yet he still He still And he's even caring today. But God says do something. We need to do it. Whatever that might be. Wherever that might be. When I first started singing, my first solo ever thing, I sang in public school. And Brother J.C. Harrison used to say, Steve, I want you to sing. And if I wasn't around my daddy, I'd tell him no. If my daddy heard, I was in trouble. But I was going to do it no matter what I said. It did not matter. I take my stuff with me. Sometimes we go to a friend of mine's church in, in New Caney. I take stuff. We practice. Whether we're going to sing or not, but we're going to be prepared. Somebody says, will you sing? Yes, we will. I love singing. I'll tell you what, this weather's got some hurt folks messed up with you. But I love singing. We want to glorify you. Not glorify us. Words. But you what do you want? Lord, that's what you want me to do. I'm doing it. Because, you know, I want those people to see me. Know who you are. That they can see you and they surround me. They don't use the right thing. They just don't use it. They don't make sense. Go to church. Go where we're supposed to. All of us. So we can learn from Jonah and say, hey, you know what? I don't want to do it. I'm going the other direction. Or we can say, God said, go this way. That's because we need to go to this way. Go to this way. God says, you need to do this. I love Jesus. Used to, if somebody asked me to preach, I'd try to go his brother's way around. I didn't like standing in front of people. And you know, it's okay. I make enough mistakes that my tongue gets tied with everything else. You can laugh at me all you want. I'm going to do it. That's the bottom line. And that's the truth. And that's what we need to do is what God would have. When we look at this, when I was going through this, I was thinking, you know, there's lots of lessons. I could be here for days. Oh, God, there's something to do for you. Tomorrow morning, you're going to work. Most of you. Some of you may be off, but most of you. You're going to be all around. The last title talk. Maybe somebody will come up and say, I just had a talk. You know, tomorrow morning, we'll have about 85 or 96 down the street. Not ever one of them. 
Not every one of them have a good heart. Read God's Word. Study God's Word. Go through it. Let God speak to you. Let's just be back to your problem. In your first day. Maybe life will take my tracks and pull them out. See, now she takes my pins and drops them in my tracks. But I like to have tracks with her all the time. My favorite track. It's the most colorful one, but it's my favorite. I don't know if they all get shaped. They need to know. That's what we do. Every one. Shouldn't we just let God be there? Shouldn't we just let God be there? I was sitting there and said, Shouldn't we just be there? Shouldn't we just be there? Quit us being God and let God be there. If I have an idea of what God is doing, that's what we need. Let's bow our heads. Let's stand.